Welcome to Acorn to Oak with Penny Quayle Pierce and co-host Matthew Donaghy. Within each acorn, there is the DNA that strives to be a mighty oak tree. All it needs to reach its potential for greatness is to be activated. You are the acorn. On this show, we will share with you the tools and guidance you need to grow into the person you are meant to be. And now your host, Penny Quayle Pierce and co-host Matthew Donaghy. Hi, good evening. Hi, uh, it's Penny and we're minus again, um, Matthew. Hopefully he'll catch up with us and we'll join uh, the show as fast as he can. Um, I know he was having problems with tech last week, so I wonder whether that's still bugging him. Actually, we're talking, I was talking with Chris uh, from um, Times Radio a few minutes ago, basically saying, uh, you know, do you have gremlins in America as much as we have gremlins in the UK? And just, uh, we were just joshing each other about some tech going on. And it's, um, it's like, you know, something does take over. It's, it's like a, a super, uh, tech world nowadays. And, um, if you're ne- not tech savvy, sometimes things will just take over. And something that you thought was going to take you five minutes takes you five hours. And something that you thought was going to take you five hours actually takes you five minutes. And, um, so, um, maybe I'm just showing my age a little bit, but, um, I was born in the 1960s. So computers were not per se with with how I was brought up. We didn't have things like that. We had um, mobile phones the size of bricks. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm uh, a little bit uh, before technology took over the world. And it's been an interesting journey. And I would also say to you that, you know, the subject that we're discussing uh, this evening, which is, you know, the power of the subconscious mind, you know, unless you know how to work with the subconscious, it can be like that naughty piece of tech, which seems to have a gremlin in it. Because, you know, unless you actually have a way of uh, addressing the subconscious, directly and starting to get some sense out of it um, it is quite senseless and you know we can resist Thank you very much. what the subconscious is hi Matthew it's nice to hear your voice you, we can resist what the subconscious mind is telling good us evening. good evening hey <laughs> and you know, we can resist what the subconscious is trying to tell us, or we can work out a systematic way of uh, being in contact with the subconscious, and which allows us then to access a much uh, bigger percentage or capacity of our mind. You may have heard me talk about this a little bit before, but it's it's worth repeating because the more you hear it, the more you get it. You know, the conscious mind, which is our waking consciousness, is just 10% of our mind's capacity. Just 10%. And that 10% is basically is our waking consciousness. And our waking consciousness is to work with the five senses, picks up data, interprets it. It basically looks to see whether we need to be in fight or flight. Um, hopefully nowadays, we'll, you know, we don't need to be in fight or flight, but we're uh, you know, we're ancient beings in some ways. And so we still have that fight or flight response. And, you know, the conscious mind is about keeping us safe. And part of that conscious mind is our ego. And the ego is definitely here to keep us safe. It will evaluate data. It will look at things. You know, if it, I don't know what the weather is like there in the, in the States uh, this evening, but it's been pouring. I mean, it's, you know, uh, England is known for its rain, but it was actually 
pouring with rain most of the day over the country. And it was like cats and dogs. It, we have that expression in the UK. It's raining cats and dogs. You know that it's chucking lots of water out of the sky at us when we talk about that. So, you know, when when we're out and about and we're just using our conscious minds, you know, we're limited. You know, it's about fight or flight. It's about survival. And it's about, you know, ego will get hold of something. And we come up with statements like, I want, I want, I want. And when we realize that, you know, the subconscious mind is 40% of our mind's capacity, we suddenly realize that it is a storehouse of gold and skills and all sorts of things that actually we suppress because we don't have room anymore in our conscious mind. If we, we actually filled it up, with some of the stuff that we suppressed into our subconscious, we, our mind would basically, you know, I'm sorry for this inelegant analogy, but we'd be in mental constipation. We wouldn't have room to think of anything. And we, you know, we need more space in our conscious mind so we can have clarity and we can start looking at the creative side of things. So I just wanted to go through that and also to mention, again, the super conscious mind and the super conscious mind is 50 percent. It is half of our mind's capacity. And that 50 percent is our super conscious, our higher self, our creativity, all of the really good, juicy things in life. So it's uh, our ability to have joy, our ability to have love in our lives and also love ourselves. But it's, uh, you know, another way of saying is it's your super conscious, it's your higher self. And dare I say it, it's where we ha where our soul lives within our mind. And, you know, that is is really important to get. So what we'll be discussing uh, once we've tuned in with Matthew and said hello is what we will go on and discuss is actually what is in that subconscious and how we can get a map to actually getting down there and doing some really important work. So I just want to say, uh, give Matthew a chance to say hello and good evening. How are you doing, Matthew? Good evening, everybody. Uh, I hope you hope you're all well. Um, yeah, we've uh, we've had uh, a month and a half's rain in just two days um, here in England. So I've uh, considered building an ark just in case the rain doesn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good that's good that's a good uh, idea yeah, maybe real interesting <coughs> it's um <laughs> i live in a in a part of the country where i actually live um uh, between the ocean and the uh forest the new forest which is a, an amazing uh forest it's it's a beautiful area of the country to live in and, um, you know, the only trouble is, is when it rains that hard, it gets very, very muddy very, very quickly. And I was out this morning uh, walking the dog <laughs> and it was mud city R us. So, yeah, it was uh, it's an interesting time. However, I also had a wonderful experience of uh, walking outside. I was just coming out of um, a leisure centre and walking around to my car. And there was this four year old uh, little girl who basically I went into umbrella envy because she had this bumblebee umbrella. And she was looking rather miserable and, and and not very happy at all. She was dragging her heels. She was wearing sandals, so she was getting her feet very wet. So I just looked at her and laughed and I said, right. And she got her grandmother with her who was uh, a little bit further ahead than her. And I just started doing I'm singing in the rain. 
and got her to jump with me into all the puddles. And it was really quite funny. Her grandmother was turning around going, this woman <laughs> is a complete and utter lunatic. But in the end, we had so much fun just kicking the water about. We were going to be soaked anyway, so you may as well enjoy it. So uh, sometimes it can feel that way <coughs> when... We're, we're not uh, um, dealing with our subconscious mind and our conscious mind is full of water and it's just sloshing around. And it's basically not helping us. You know, we have repeated um, thought patterns. We go into hurry, worry. We're constantly worrying about uh, resources and how we're going to meet deadlines and constantly thinking, you know, it's all about us. We take things so personally. And, you know, if somebody... Um, uh, drives towards us and you know that they're, they're not necessarily being very helpful maybe they're flashing their lights or they're just wanting you to get out of the way um, and you just look at it and just go what's this person on and what we don't remember is that we have probably done some behavior like that in the past when we've been hurrying somewhere and you know but the thought forms that actually come up and we go loop and loop and loop and it's just not really helpful uh, to our daily lives. But we've gone into this fight or flight. We've gone into uh, I need to protect all my borders, you know, um, and, you know, we can be quite... Uh, aggressive, although we don't mean to be, in policing those boundaries because we feel like somebody is trying to either take something from us or they're trying to um, pull the wool over our eyes or we just don't feel safe around them and we go into fight or flight. So we get a kick of adrenaline which actually, you know, when it was uh, when we were cavemen, was really important if we were going to have to fight a, a, a cyber tooth uh, tiger. But it's not helpful when you're walking down the road uh, going to the nearest shop. You know, uh, it's so when we when we overreact that way and we get the dump of, dump of adrenaline, what the dump of adrenaline does is takes takes us into uh, a, a place that we, although we're actually in this, in the Western world, unfortunately, we are used to being in fight or flight because that is actually what stresses us out. You know, what we, we don't realise is our adrenal glands are working overtime, <coughs> which puts us into a state of unbalance. In um, and the medical term we would use is we want to be in homeostasis, we want to be in balance. But what actually happens is when we get that buzz of adrenaline, we are completely, it's like having the carpet pulled from underneath us. We are out of balance. And once we're out of balance, it takes some time to work back into balance. And, you know, as, as Chris and I were talking about before Matthew got here was, you know, the gremlins in a computer can definitely put you out of balance. And it's not, you know, you, you're just shaking your head at a computer because you think it's actually holding you hostage. And it's not. It's just something is a glitch is happening a gremlin is around and sometimes as i said we can have those gremlins in our conscious mind which like run interference and we cannot think clearly once fight or flight response is actually clicked into place you know uh because all of our you know, the glucose dump we get when we get a fight or flight uh, response, obviously it was coming in because you needed it to run or fight in uh, caveman days, but we don't need that now. 
So we find that our blood sugar is moving up and down at an enormous rate. And when we then hit at the bottom of fight or flight, we actually then need to take on board something else. And it may be we decide on a cup of coffee or an energy drink or something because we feel that we've gone into the um at the low of a of a sugar low and we need something to pick us back up again and unfortunately then we're in this battle of fighting low and high blood sugar and we're swinging rather than being in balance and you know that is some of the the you know the thoughts around this and when you actually look at that if you're you know 100 percent uh, identified with the just the conscious mind you don't realize that you've got huge resources in your subconscious and your superconscious and you know obviously tonight we're talking about the subconscious and you may have heard me talk uh, before about, you know, the way that I look at the subconscious is like a massive warehouse. And in that warehouse is you know, we have different sections um, that are really important to understand and realize. And a, a, approximately, and I say approximately because if I came up with an absolute, someone would uh, challenge me on it, but approximately 20% of that subconscious mind is dedicated to skills and things that we have learned and things that we no longer need to keep in our conscious minds, but it's really handy to have somewhere to go down and bring out that resource when we need it. And I've talked uh, 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 before about, you know, when we learn to drive, we put the the learning into the subconscious mind because when we get in a car now you don't think about what you're doing you just automatically do it you know we're on autopilot yeah and that's the sign of having put it into your subconscious mind and also an awful lot of job related uh skills will be kept in the subconscious because again it's something that you don't need to think about you don't consciously bring it out and go oh how do i have to send a memo um, because actually you know in your own workplace how these things work so that is a skill that you've put into your subconscious mind, as well as some of the other stuff. I know, you know, um, as a mom, you know, I don't have to think about how I change a nappy. I know, you know, I, I knew how to do one. I knew how to do it because I'm a registered sick children's nurse and obviously been around children most of my life. Uh, but I didn't have to think about it. It was something that I went on automatic pilot. The one thing that will shock you out of automatic pilot sometimes when you're a mum is the content of the nappy. If it's a real uh, it's a real doozy, that will shock your sense of smell and you'll come out and go, Wow, how could that come out of him or her? <laughs> you just look at it and smile. But it's really important to realise that the storehouse of the subconscious can also uh, the other 20 percent i tend to look at as clutter and that is clutter that we have suppressed into the subconscious but is not helpful it may be um the time you stubbed your toe when you were little and you felt that you had to suppress the pain it may be you know maybe not doing very well at a test when you're in grade school and thinking Ooh, maybe I should have done better uh, and what are my parents going to say and what's my teacher going to say and you suppress that because you actually you don't want to deal with it um, or it's too painful or it makes you too scared um, and it's usually all of these suppressions have an emotional charge and it as i said it could be shame it could be that it was just way too painful 
or it could have been a loss of a loved one or the you know your experience you know your first love was not necessarily the best experience of love that you've ever had and you suppress that unhappiness or maybe feelings of, of poor self-worth or whatever it is and some of the stuff as i say we tend to look at it uh, as a negative emotion there is no negative there is no positive it just is however we tend to label it or our conscious mind tends to label it as uh, what I would say is a gross emotion or a more negative emotion but we store just as much gold down there as anything else we store some of the magic moments some of the real sweet uh, times that we've had um, but we've also been told as children you know don't be so noisy you know children are seen and not heard you stop daydreaming you need to pay attention to this so we suppressed some of the really good neat stuff as well as the not so positive uh, emotions so you know as i said this warehouse of amazing stuff we have got we we tend not to know is there and you know when something comes up in our normal lives you know we tend to look at it and go where did that come from what on earth is going on here and you know so we need to we need to have a map of how all of this works so we'll be talking about that when we get back from the break see you on the other side <laughs> Conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Home Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. I'm Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, we know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website acorntooak.org.uk One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your football buddy, your football buddy, or you, your best man, your worst man, you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. While one in three adults has pre-diabetes, with early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. So we're back from the break. Um, so it's good to be here. I'm just going to hand over to Matthew uh, to allow him to... Uh, to um, put any of his own spin on what we were talking about before the break, before we move on. So is there anything you would like to add, Matthew? Yeah, thanks, Penny. Um, 
the subconscious mind it, it, it's really easy we we're, we're, we're told when we're younger I, I i remember it coming up in a lot of science um lessons is that we are only capable of using this 10 percent, and it, it the the larger part of us i mean one of the tools i use is sub subconscious connected breath work um to access different parts of our mind and also with the the super conscious as well i know we're concentrating on the subconscious but the super conscious mind can can be accessed it's just learning how to get the conscious mind out of the way um and there are various different tools and one of the greatest ones is, is meditation um so there was a, a real interesting article done on steve jobs um, and he was going around in the 70s and this is when we had no concept of mobile phones and he said to people that oh in, in years to come we're, we're going to have these these phones that are actually intelligent that they're smart and we're going to be able to access all these different kind of apps and all this information and people would look at him and think he was completely mad because they were in their conscious mind and couldn't even begin to comprehend some of the things that he was saying to them um and it happens i, I think a lot with with especially like, like scientists i mean if you're if you're Einstein or someone like that, until the point that your theory is proven, most people would think you're completely insane because they just can't comprehend what the idea you have or, or what you're trying to explain. I mean, if you imagine Edison trying to explain what he was working on, oh, well, I'm working on a light bulb. Um, most people couldn't comprehend them, but I fully believe that they they were just able to access that subconscious stroke superconscious whereby the limit of the conscious mind goes completely out the window because you're dealing with such a larger part of the brain it's so much more capable of of being able to comprehend things or for want of a better word dream things up so Steve Jobs was walking around in the 70s telling people about smartphones and his wonderful ideas for Apple and that sort of thing. And most people would think he was absolutely mad and wouldn't consider investing in Apple. However, if, if they believed him and put 1% of their money in, they would probably be a billionaire now. But the point I'm trying to get across is we can access these different parts of the mind, but what, we, what you need to do is find a tool to keep the conscious mind busy so steve jobs would put his success down to meditation and that's quietening the conscious mind getting deeper into self so that you can effectively bypass the conscious mind into what we almost class as a, a as a dream state it's that never-ending imagination it's it's the larger part uh, of self um which has so much more capabilities i mean within the the subconscious mind when you um when you when you clear a lot of the clutter that penny was talking about we we need we do need a certain amount to hold the amount of skills that, that we possess um but the other 20 percent of the subconscious mind the more clearing you can do around your emotional baggage and any sort of unhelpful thought forms uh, and that sort of thing the more capacity you're freeing up to be able to uh, think outside the box to come up with ideas and, and and things like that that will just blow people away um so that's why a lot of the work we do is very much it's in the subconscious and it's dealing with that clutter um and once you deal deal with that clutter you're effectively creating 20 percent more th than you had before so rather than it being um working on all the emotions that you've never felt and and all that sort of thing it actually releases it to be hyper creative which is ultimately what we want.
we would all love to be more creative and more joyful, more passion. Um, we talk about various different emotions. Um, and I think I'm, I'm sure I said it to Penny before. When I started doing my journey, working with the subconscious mind, it was, I'm so angry. I, I just want to get rid of this anger. And Penny was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me stop you for a minute. You don't want to get rid of your anger. What you want to do is find a tool to raise its vibration, clear it, and then pull it back in as passion. Because ultimately, that's what anger is. It's, it, uh, it's passion, but it's the, it's the shadow side. So if you flip your anger, you have more passion. Um, and made a, a huge, huge difference in my life. Uh, when I when I got that, that actually, our, 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 the reason we don't have so much passion and drive in later life is because it, there's only so much we, we we have, and most of it is being taken up with anger, and it can be from childhood stuff. It can be even the job you're working in. If you're constantly being told that you need to hit targets, and if you're not hitting targets, you don't feel good enough. So then you get angry at self. Um, a lot of people with depression, they they feel as though they're no good and they're not, not creative and that sort of thing. They're, they're, pass they're actually feeling anger because depression is anger turned within. A lot of people think it's sadness, but it's not. It's anger turned within. It's that anger that, that their life hasn't turned out quite the way they wanted to, that they're not succeeding in the way that they wanted to. And they're angry because they don't understand why. Um, and when you can flip that into passion, that's when it, 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 even just that can absolutely transform your life. You feel more energized. You feel confident. You feel like you can actually create and achieve things. So Yeah, it's, that, that, it's, sorry, it's real important. Um, I think it is also realizing that, you know, our limiting beliefs, um, that, and we've stored those in the subconscious because that's what, you know, when we come across it, you know, our, the immediate, we have a, a voice in our head that says, no, you can't do that because of X, Y, Z. And it's looking at it and just going, Hey, hang on a minute. That's a limiting belief whose belief is it and you know it may have been something that was repeated to us as a child so we like you know we've been hypnotized with this voice of no you can't do that it's too scary it costs so much you know money doesn't grow on trees you know uh etc and it's looking at it and going okay so what do i need to do to clear that limiting belief from the subconscious, or it could be a core conflict. And what I call what I call core conflicts are very much it's um, something that you know you've been brought up doing, and you've always done it this way. And suddenly something comes in which is slightly uh, conflicting. And it may well be, you know, making a huge life decision like getting married to someone to someone who's in a different faith or a different religion than you. And therefore, there's a core conflict that raises its head and will sabotage all sorts of different things because there's no other way of the saboteur, which we were talking about last week, um, you know, coming in and helping you gain clarity. And most of the time, you know, we are seeking clarity um, around um, our own beliefs, our, you know, our experiences, uh, trying to make sense. You know, that's what, um, you know, the conscious mind is all about, is trying to make some type of sense out of the world and the experiences that you're having. And when the two don't marry up, that's where a core conflict comes up. And, you know, that can be hugely debilitating and will send people spinning off into all sorts of different pathologies. And not just physical pathologies, but mental pathologies and thinking my mind is not as sharp as it should be. 
or is it my age that's causing my mind not to be as sharp as possible? Um, or do I just need to gain more clarity about something? So, you know, when you're looking at uh, exploring the subconscious, you know, and when people say to me, well, Penny, how do you do that? And I say, you know, you need to find a guide or mentor who is used to dealing in the subconscious, who's been down many, many times themselves. You know, it's very much like saying, you know, if you got lost in a forest and you wanted to find your way back to the ocean, the best guide you could get is someone who has a condo there, who lives on the ocean who lives by the ocean, and get them to come in and give you some really good mentorship. You know, one of the things I find in the work that I do, uh, an awful lot of people say, well, I just want to, just tell me how to do it and I'll do it. And I'll go, uh-huh, that's interesting. Or, you know, I'll just read a self-help book and I'll I'll get the technique. Or I'll do this process once and I'll go home and I'll practice it at home. And I must admit, I, I just, what we what we say in the UK is I do the nodding dog syndrome. I don't know if you have the same in America where you get people driving their cars and they've got a nodding dog in the back. And I just go, uh-huh, that's real interesting. You know, something that took me, I would say, probably 15 years to perfect. You want to be able to do that in 15 minutes. I actually <laughs> helped, I have to tell you the truth here, and I do posts about the truth is. And the truth is, you're never going to do it unless you get some guidance. Because yep. you will go off track. You will get lost in the forest before you get to the ocean. And we'll talk about this after the break. The break. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, we know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website, acorntooak.org.uk. Long ago, you wouldn't think of galloping on a horse while doing calligraphy, and you wouldn't have attempted to ride your bike while typing a letter, yet you think you can safely operate a multi-ton vehicle while texting? Behind the wheel is no place to multitask. If you want to BRB, drive now and text later. Lives depend on it. 
Visit stoptechstoprex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. So, hi, we're back. So, uh, we've been talking about the subconscious mind and basically, you know, in the write-up that we did was, you know, if you were, your intention was to clear out the basement, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't start in the loft, you wouldn't start clearing uh, clutter in the loft. So, you know, we're talking about, or you could uh, bring a, uh, and allows you together and actually talk about well we're talking about the basement because we're talking about the subconscious mind so if you wanted to you know the, again the best idea is if you were working in your basement yeah and clearing out the clutter yeah it's best to go down the stairs and go to the basement rather than going up to the loft which uh is very much talking about the the conscious mind or the super conscious mind so you know you want to be there actually in the subconscious uh, to actually take out some of these boxes or crates of uh, different materials that you've suppressed and actually have a look at it and going, you know, is it important for me to keep this now? Or can I just actually uh, transmute the energy and bring it back in as a resource to myself, which will create more joy more happiness more freedom more connection with the super conscious and when you're, we're talking about these three elements you know when we're actually talking about uh you know um chakras and you know we're talking about the energetic stuff um you look at, at uh you know your base chakra it's you know your base your sacral and your solar plexus these are the three physical um chakras or the phys dealing with physical energy then you have the heart which is very much the balance and then you have the three spiritual centers you know your throat chakra your third eye and your crown and you know uh, you have what we would call in in energetics a central vertical column which connects all of those centers together and at an even deeper level, you have a connection that connects you to Mother Earth and goes right the way up your body through the central vertical column, right the way through out of your crown chakra and connects you to the source. And the source could be whatever makes sense to you. It could be God. It could be, you know, the universe. It could be, you know, whatever. You know, it's whatever comes into your frame of reference. So you are connected to the source of everything and you are connected to Mother Earth. And that's what grounds you. And that line we call the Hara. Or we call it the Hara line. And if it's in alignment, in other words, if it's straight and connected to the source and connected to the earth then you have a much better chance of working with your states of consciousness if it's not in alignment you will find it really quite difficult so the first thing that you would be taught in beginning to use your subconscious mind is to get the practitioner or the coach to help you connect to help you be in alignment so that you can go down into your subconscious mind with ease. Now, I don't know if you were listening to us last week, but we used a specific countdown of numbers and colors, which is very much part of the silver mind technique, who basically helps you to lower the speed with which your mind and your brain is moving it's it's taking you from normal consciousness down into a state called alpha and what that does when you go down into alpha is slow the mind down and what it actually does is you know the um, practitioners of breath for life breath work are able to help you kick the conscious mind into touch. It gives it another job 
and the uh, that job is just looking at the speed and the depth and the quality of your breath as you start to breathe and as that happens what actually uh, what actually happens during a breath for life breath work session is your subconscious mind then takes over now there's no big brass band that comes out and goes do, 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 do. you're in your subconscious you know we that doesn't happen it's just your mind becomes so much slower you go into the hyper creative subconscious state which then allows you to start clearing out clutter on site in other words in the basement this <laughs> you know you don't have to suddenly think that I've, I've got to have really long arms to stretch from the kitchen to the, the basement to clear out the basement you're actually there on site and that is why subconscious connected breath work or breath for life is so powerful it was specifically designed to engage with the subconscious mind yeah that you can clear the clutter without having to try and do it consciously because if you do it consciously you would never you would get never get any results because the conscious mind thinks it knows best you know whenever i see people who have you know they're keeping repeating the same old behavior and not getting different results it's because they're trying to think it rather than feel it and do it you know thinking paralyzes you into actually being frozen or resisting the fact that actually you just need to get down there and dirty and get in there and clear the clutter because it's old stuff that you don't want to keep which is not valuable to you anymore and it's just stopping you it's like you know having a bag of shit that you're carrying around behind you you know if you run fast enough you can't smell it but it's going to catch up with you and you know it is the work that we've all been you know we all need to do and it is as i said you know you can use other types of breath work and you may well get some results from it but actually when you're doing conscious connected breath work you're in the kitchen and you're trying to clean out the basement it's not such a great use of your time so handing it over to Matthew again because I'm sh I can hear Phil him going oh oh I want to add something <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah for me for me what what made breath work um, or subconscious connected breath work so powerful in my life is I I'd done a lot of talk therapies beforehand um, had a lot of anger issues and a lot of childhood issues and talking about it and and going over it and trying to pick it apart it, it it gives you a sense that you're moving forwards from it and 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 that you've dealt with it but actually unless you deal with the emotion that's connected to that situation you can talk about it all you like but what's going to keep coming back is that core emotion or the, the core belief around that situation so it's great to gain clarity within the conscious mind around where your issues are uh, and, and what they are. But unless you deal with the emotion that's connected to it, it it's like putting um, a Band-Aid on a bullet hole. It's only so long it, it's going to last. Um, and that for me was when, when I found breath work, that it was like the key for me. It was kind of like that's why I had never been able to get through w some of the things that I've been through. Um, just to share just how powerful breath work is. Um, when Penny was talking about core, core beliefs, um, if you're told something enough times, you will believe it, even if you if you don't think you believe it. So when I was younger, I was told told a lot that uh, I would never succeed, um, and that, to be quite frank, that I was an idiot. Um, 
And I remember sharing with Penny about a week after my first breath work, something's missing. And Penny said to me, well, well what is it? And when we, when we went through it, I, I, I was thinking at the time about uh, changing jobs, going to work for another company. Um, and my usual thought form will, would be, I would like to earn more money, so I'm going to go and work for another company. And one of the first things that used to come in was, you can't do that, you're an idiot. And that was not my thought at all. That was my mother's thought. Now, one breath work took that away. Um, and that's when I realized the power of it and, and how deep ingrained these, these comments and these opinions can be. Because we take something that somebody said what, about us and it, it can roll around and around and around. And before we know it, we're telling ourselves that. Um, so when I, when I spoke to Penny and said something's missing and we, we picked apart what it was, it was my mother's voice. And it, it was just the most amazing experience and, and just showed me how if you deal, you can talk about it all you like, like I had in therapies before that. Um, but dealing with the emotion connected to that took it away. That was it. It, it. it was done. And the freedom it gave me within my life around my decisions, it, it was just incredible. Um, and if I'm sure we can all think in our own lives how where, where teachers have, have sort of suggested that we're, we're not the most intelligent people and, and that sort of thing. And actually, generally when people insult you, uh, they'll point one finger at you and there's three pointed back at them. So they're generally talking about how they feel about themselves, only they're putting it on you. And we don't realise how damaging it is. Um, so whatever walk of life you, or whatever situation you look at, whether you're looking at school or where you, whether you're looking at like work in the workplace, there are people who naturally uh, work within their conscious minds better. So you could say, we, we would say they're more intelligent. Um, and it, so it's great for that 1% that are getting the good grades and are really succeeding in school and that sort of thing. But what about the rest of the people, the, the rest of the kids? The rest of the kids are sitting there thinking, oh, I, could, I should be doing better. I should be doing this. And, it, and it's the shoulds um, that are, are so negative. And, we're, and the we're, we're being told that we're, yeah, we're being told that we're not intelligent and we could be, we could be doing better. And actually, some of the most successful people in the world do, don't have a grade between them. So it, it's proven in, in life that um, intelligence isn't necessarily a, a road to success. Um, I can think of a lot of, my, a lot of my friends when we were going through uni and, that, and, and college and that sort of thing, were, had a, a, a higher level of, of um, intelligence than myself or were able to sort of connect with the work better than I was. I mean, I was... I wasn't really interested in the work necessarily at school, so I, I, I never failed an exam, but I, I didn't get the straight A's that I, I possibly could have if I engaged with it more. Um, but people are told, people at, at uni, they, they were focused on the intelligence and, oh, well, if I get this good job and if I study hard, then I, I'm going to get to do what I want to do in, in life and succeed. And I would say that probably... 20% of my friends um, that went to uni studying a specific uh, subject are not doing that now. And it's really interesting when we're told to focus so much on one thing rather than it, it, it's the mind work rather than the, the uh, for want of a better term, what, what makes your soul sing. Um, a lot of people that study in a certain subject because they've been told that's what they're good at and that's what they should pursue actually don't end up in that job anyway um so it can almost we're we're, we're, we're telling people sort of we're giving them false evidence um really um and it's yeah, uh, yeah. Great for the one 
percent that are that are doing well are actually suppressing feelings of emotion around not feeling good enough, not yeah. performing I, just, well enough. Yeah. I just wanted to get a point across before, you know, the show is, is, is coming up to near to time. So, you know, one of the things that uh, people in the world today think, you know, it's all about uh, mindset. And I would say to you, yes, that's true. It is about mindset. However, the mind that they're talking about is just the 10%. They're talking about mindset for the 10% of the conscious mind. They're missing the point that there's 90% of amazing resource that they're not talking about. And yes, don't get me wrong, I think mind, mindset is important because that's how we deal with the conscious mind. But it's training the mind and training the ego so it will get into service to its master, which is the soul and the subconscious, so that you can really and truly live a holistic life so you can engage with all parts of self you can live in your authentic self which is in your super conscious mind and once you align yourself with that then everything else comes with ease and i'm talking about the whole of your life here so how